Hi, I'm Rick Morton, and welcome to Profiles for the 2000 BBSI in Las Vegas. We are coming to you from uh, certainly one of the most beautiful resorts on Earth. We are at the beautiful Hilton Cancun Golf and Beach Resort in Cancun on the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico. And you know, every year we try to find beautiful, wonderful locations to uh, host Profiles from. And every year I say, gosh, how is it going to get better than this? And now here we are, and I'm saying, how could it possibly get better than this. This is a beautiful resort. You can see it behind me. One of the most gorgeous hotels in all of Cancun. We are in the hotel section, what they call here in Cancun. But unlike a lot of places here, this area has a tremendous amount of beach. They have seven swimming pools. They have 420 something beautiful rooms, restaurants, great service, their own golf course, terrific convention facilities. It's everything you as a manufacturer or a distributor could ever hope as far as a great meeting facility or a vacation. And as we go through the profile show, we're going to take you around this hotel. You'll meet Humberto Ramirez, the man who is responsible for marketing at this hotel, as well as the general manager. We'll take you through the kitchens. We're going to show you all around. It's a great time. But first, here's a look at what's coming up on this edition of Profiles. The crowds were nonstop throughout the entire New York educational program. All Facebook talk gave me a tour, and we talked about an event built a 20,000 square foot building. Seven swimming pools that are beautiful. Online training uh, on how to interview. We returned for is great service. A unique feature of this hotel, and certainly a good one, is this independent voice for the licensed hair professional. Information um, into, the, into the home page. Our clients cut their turnover in half. Of the preservation and what the USI and ABA are progressing. The general manager of the Hilton Resort. Resort is a gorgeous place and it attracts but because we know the industry well and again because we go we go beyond the surface the companies is the fact that they formulate and fill the lifestyle line it really has to, to do more with wellness and all of that plus we'll show you around this beautiful Hilton Cancun beach and golf resort in Cancun in the Yucatan right here in Mexico stay tuned we're going to tell you about that next as we get started with profiles for the BBSI Well, I think if I look back over the years, this is about the 25th year that I have been coming to the International Beauty Shows here in New York. And what's different about it this year, of course, is that it's bigger and better than ever. As you look around here, it's 10 o'clock in the morning on Sunday, and there are thousands and thousands of people here. You know, the fact of the matter is, when it comes to beauty shows, it just doesn't get any better than this. This would be the granddaddy of them all. The people at Advanced Star that are running this show are almost all new. We're going to talk to uh, Margaret Pennis, who is responsible for what's happening. We're going to talk about the changes that she's made in the IBS New York and what's coming up in the future. There's a lot to see here, so let's get started as we visit the IBS show here in New York. This show, the greatest in the industry, just keeps getting bigger and better every year. The show floor is filled with excitement and renewed focus on education. Exhibitors know that this is and will continue to be the most important show of the year. The IBS has the support of the beauty industry, especially from the people that count, the manufacturer. Leland Hirsch, of course, probably has been to more IBS shows than the IBS group has. Still an important event for you, obviously. Absolutely. You know, this year we introduced a new brand called Pure Hair, Pure, the Pure Shop. And we had two giant booths here this year, and this is a great show for us. Um, it's very crowded, as you can see. It's great for hairdressing. It brings the community of hairdressing together. And, you know, we have to grow the industry. We've got to get young people going to beauty school. School. Uh, we have to have great programs, 401k programs, uh, hospitalization programs, and the IBS is supportive of all the new things in the future that we need in the hairdressing industry to involve our business. Why is it important for Sally's to be at this event? Exposure. We get exposed to somewhere between 40 and 60,000 cosmetologists here every year. Um, it's a great show for us. We do a lot of business here. If you've seen our booth this year, we've taken a lot of effort to try and upgrade the image of the booth where our focus is not on selling product as it has been in the past, but on creating an environment where the cosmetologist can feel comfortable about coming up to our booth, seeing a great show, 
and then hopefully go back to the stores and buy merchandise. This New York Beauty Show is still an important event for Paul Mitchell. Oh my God, it's incredible. The amount of people here, as you can see with our booth, uh, with the skill centers that we have, um, people can't get enough of it. It's just amazing. Everyone we talked to was thrilled about the show. With more booths and education than ever before, there's something for everyone. The IBS team is focused on responding to the changing needs of the industry to keep IBS shows number one in the country. Margaret Pennis is the group show director for IBS. She's excited about the success of the changes they've already made, and even more so about the one still to come. This has been, from what we understand, I mean, just from being here for two days, talking to exhibitors, talking to people that are here, this is the best show they've ever seen. This is what I'm hearing. You told me last year you're going to make some changes. Tell me about it. Are you making them? Are they happening? What's coming? Well, we reinvented the educational program. That was a big challenge for us. Um, people are responding really well. Our master classes are selling out. We have the top talent in the industry. Um, if you look around you, you can see you know, the different signage, the, just the, the whole positioning of the show. We segmented the floor a little bit differently. It's cleaner. Um, we've discouraged a lot of the kind of exhibitors that used to be in a pretty courty boutique area. We really tried to concentrate on professional beauty products for professional salons and distributors. And it shows. I mean, it's, it's here. Um, Long Beach was sort of a dry run for us. We learned a bunch of stuff, made a bunch of changes, and that's just the beginning. I've been focusing on this show for the past, you know, six months just in repositioning it. Now we can think more strategically in terms of where we have to go. Basically, I want the whole building. You know, I mean, I think we can do amazing things in terms of growing it. We've got some major companies that are interested in coming back after a long sojourn of being away, so we're pretty excited. Just walk, talking about companies uh, coming back, we have uh, noticed, of course, over the years, kind of fewer and fewer of the big companies were participating. Now we're seeing more, I mean, Redken has a terrific they do. Terrific presence here this year. They do. Um, the Altieri Group now has a terrific presence. You're seeing, we're seeing not only some of the old companies, big ones coming back, but we're seeing development of new big companies. Yes. What are you doing to promote this? Well, we're basically trying to win them back. I mean, you know, they, they were soured. I think they had some valid reasons for making, you know, changes and choosing to allocate their dollars elsewhere. Um, we made a commitment to create an environment that would change that. Um, if you go into the educational program, you'll see that the master classes are sponsored by Wella, Aquage, Matrix. These are companies that haven't had a presence with IBS for a long time, and they're doing extremely well. So it's sort of like baby steps. You know, we take them, we do some good things, we collaborate with them on stuff that works. They don't really need the show environment as much as they do the access to the audience. So we're providing access at multi-levels for them, and they're paying attention. Um, just the fact that we are um, that we've qualified everybody that comes in the door. New York's a tough city to do that, but you can see when you're on the show floor these that are these are hairdressers, you know, and they're responsible for buying product or recommending products, introducing products into their salon. Um, we're just we're just we're changing who we are to reflect what we think the beauty industry is, and it's a very professional environment, very committed to education and product development, so that's where we're trying to be. You know, it's the major players in the beauty industry that continue to support the IBS show. The major players are all here. This, of course, the uh, Paul Mitchell uh, Pavilion. Look at it, it's just great. They have got their skill centers going now. They've got the uh, their stage show over here going continuously. They have had hundreds and hundreds of people here constantly. We see uh, Paul Mitchell here, we see Redkin here, we see, um, uh, of course, Texture Line is here in a big way. It is attracting hairdressers who want education, as well as hairdressers who are looking for the latest in new products. It's all here at the IBS. The crowds were non-stop throughout the entire New York show. The attendees certainly weren't disappointed by what they saw inside. Tons of new products and advanced education, including master classes with top industry names like Sassoon. This year, for the first time, you could even buy IBS clothing and special souvenirs. I caught up with Vincent Caprio and asked him his thoughts on this exciting show. It's great. You know, the exhibitors are extremely happy. Um, we've we had the highest attendance we've ever had, and this is actually the largest exhibiting show we've ever had. We actually had 
20,000 square feet more this year, and that translates into layman's terms to 200 more booths this year. So it's the largest international beauty show of all time. The exhibitors are extremely happy. You can see that the traffic's been tremendous. People are selling here, and it's just been a really rewarding experience for all parties. In just a few minutes, we'll bring you back here to New York for a look at some of the hot products launched at this year's IBS show, including the website that everyone's talking about, BehindTheChair.com. But first, let's head west for a look at another IBS success, the Long Beach Show in Long Beach, California. You know, as you walk around the floor here, you realize that the Long Beach Show is still a very, very important event in the beauty industry in general, not to mention to the uh, International Beauty Group, the IBS in New York, of course, a major show, Long Beach, Hair Color USA. You still see terrific manufacturers here. You're also seeing a lot of new and exciting companies that have brand new products. I think this year we have seen more companies with new and interesting products than we've seen here in a long time. A lot of people on the floor. I mean, here it is almost 6 o'clock right now, and the place is still jumping. We have talked to a lot of manufacturers who are having a great time here at Long Beach, and of course, it is indicative of what's happening with IBS shows all over the country. If there's one word that sets IBS shows apart from the others, it would be education. There's a commitment to give the attendees what they come to trade shows for, to learn something new. Their strategy seems to be working, too, based on what we've seen on the show floor. There's lots of excitement and lots of education. Kit Hamilton is the uh, director of marketing for the International Beauty Group. You're responsible for, like, everything, what, the IBS New York, the IBS Long Beach, Hair Color USA, American Salon, American Spa, Shades, Shades of, Beauty, of Beauty. Right. Mm -hmm. Big job. Yeah, it is. It exciting is job. job for you? Terribly exciting. It's wonderful. We're I'm here at Long Beach. Tell me about the excitement specifically here. Well, this is great. Long Beach is, we've turned the event completely around. We've brought in some of the best educators in the industry, the biggest names. And we knew that if we brought in the best educators, we bring in the best quality attendee, and that was really our, our goal here. And look around you. I mean, we're, it's packed, and I think our exhibitors are thrilled. Let's talk about the other IBS events, because there are major shows, of course, the International Beauty Show in New York, Hair Color USA, still very, very strong events in the beauty industry. What's the plan? I mean, what is it you're trying to tell the beauty industry about these shows and these events? What's going to happen in the next three or four years with these very familiar shows to most of us? Well, we're really reinventing the uh, traditional beauty show model. We're bringing in programs that had never been done before in this industry that are very quite, you know, actually quite common in other industries, such as registering attendees, um, qualifying attendees, making sure that they're beauty professionals. Um, another big step we took, and I think it's, it's a very obvious one, is we updated all our graphics. It's a beauty show, and, and it's had to be beautiful um, and really reflect the industry we serve. Um, but most importantly is to create a true must-attend, must-exhibit event that will best serve the needs of the manufacturers as well as the beauty professionals who are here to get educated and really grow. The IBS group is working hard to continue the success of the Long Beach Show. They seem to have the right formula too with a combination of exciting booths and a focus on education. It's no accident. This is the management team that has grown the Magic Show, the premier fashion industry trade show, into the largest and most successful in the industry. It's this expertise and experience that will continue to take the IBS shows to the next level. Joe Lozier, of course, uh, the man responsible for, like, everything we see from now on at the beauty shows, but your main job, of course, still is the Magic Show. You're responsible for one of the biggest, most exciting shows ever to come to Las Vegas, the men's clothing show. What do you think when you come here now and you see what your people in the beauty industry side are doing with the uh, with the Long Beach show. Well, I think Margaret and her team have actually made a lot of progress with this show. They've done a lot of things to improve the environment, the layout, the actual workings for the environment. We've revamped the entire educational program, all based on what the industry has asked us to do. So all those programs which, we, which have really been the key to our success at Magic are being implemented on, in a very timely fashion here. We, we're not quite where we want to be yet, but it is an evolution and we are going to keep getting better. You think you're going to be prepared? I know over the years you've seen the Magic Show grow phenomenally to where I imagine it's been a, a problem just to keep up. Are you expecting that kind of growth now to change Long Beach over the next four or five years? Well, Magic changes as the fashion industry changes. And with our international beauty group, we'll change and try to be out front of the beauty industry to help, them, to help lead them into the future.
The future sure does look bright for the IBS Long Beach show. But we're just about out of time, so let's head back to New York as promised for a look at what some people think are the hottest products on the show floor. The hottest new product in the beauty industry is Avance, simply because it's a holistic line with seaweed and algae-based products that create beauty through wellness. The hottest product in the beauty industry now is Jeans Color. Why? Because with this you can obtain all the vibrant color that you want on the hair. It has no ammonia, peroxide free, very easy to use, everyone can do it and we have seven vibrant beautiful shades. The hottest new product in the uh, beauty industry today is Fake Bake. It's a sunless tanning product. It works with your own pigment. It's not a chemical stain or a dye. It comes with an exfoliator, a moisturizer, and a tanner. Looks like you've been out in the sun without the sun. Behindthechair.com really is the very first internet portal specifically for the professional beauty industry. And our concept really is nothing more than the fact that the internet allows us this huge opportunity to take all of the information and the communication in this industry and put it together in a really dynamic way to benefit all of the manufacturers, the distributors, the salons that are out there. Because of the fact that manufacturers and distributors have continued to consolidate, what ends up happening really is that the industry almost becomes a bit more fragmented and salons don't have as much of a voice. This is their opportunity to have a voice for the very first time, really, and communicate with each other, to learn from each other, and get all the information in one place 24 hours a day, seven days a week. If you've got a hot product, you need to expose it to as many beauty industry professionals as possible. And the best way to do that is to showcase your company and your products at IBS shows around the country. For those companies that have not participated in IBS for a few years, it's time to take another look, because the IBS group plans to make you glad you did. We want you back. You know, we know how to do it. We, we know how people feel about IBS now belonging to this big corporate entity. But we've got a team of people that understand both the trade show business and the beauty business and also really understand education. So this change and, and this improvement is just a, a teeny bit of what we're, we're going to be able to do in the future. We're committed to it. We have the financial resources to do it, which is a major thing. And we have the expertise. So we're just going to you know, continue to wow them. That's the hope. Humberto Ramirez is the uh, marketing coordinator. Of course, the marketing people, you know how that is. They're in charge of kind of everything and don't even realize it. And, uh, Umberto has been uh, talking to us for the last few weeks about this wonderful resort here in Cancun. And of course, now we're here. We're out by the pool. Actually, we're out by seven pools. That's true, Rick. Does, are there any hotels that have this kind of water facility oh, no, besides no, no, no. you? This is the only hotel with this amazing swimming pool area. We have seven swimming pools in Cascade. And here at the Hilton Cancun, we always have a wonderful sun, and you can stay here without people around you. It's, what he means there is it's, it's almost secluded. We're down the beach. We, uh, there's a beautiful, gorgeous beach area here. Seven Sorry. swimming pools that are beautiful. A couple of jacuzzis. Uh, a bar you can, of course, swim up to. Uh, beautiful crystal clear water. And it's just a great place. The hotel itself has, what, 426 rooms? 426 rooms, all of them with ocean view. Rick, how did they do that? Well, it's amazing. The construction is wonderful and it's a perfect wine. So all of them have uh, ocean view. They've managed to uh, angle the rooms so yes. everybody has this view of the ocean. Yes. And uh, we're kind of on the point here. So you can actually see the bay in Cancun and you can see the ocean. It is a gorgeous place. These pools are just amazing. The hotel itself is amazing. And Umberto is going to show us around. We're going to have a great time as we continue our uh, profiles look at the beautiful Hilton Cancun Golf and Beach Resort with Umberto Ramirez. See how I did that? Ramirez. Ramirez. Yeah. A little later on, we're going to have a Cincinnati chili. Absolutely. Is that what they call it? Cincinnati Skyline Chili. Skyline right? Chili. Yeah, which is nothing like chili at all. It's more like spaghetti with brown sauce. True. But we'll, we'll show it maybe later. We're here with Connie Barrett, the president, founder, CEO. For 31 years at Tressa, there's more changes going on at Tressa than you can shake 
the proverbial stick at, and uh, we're going to tell you all about all of them when we come back on Profiles. Don't go away. There's a whole lot more to come. Chill. It's time for another Spotlight here on Profiles, and with me, uh, Bert Carter, the president of Salon Training International, the other half of Susie Fields and Bert Carter. Susie is your lovely wife on our other show, by the way. Did you know that? I think I heard about you that. You did? Yeah. I want to talk to you not about um, so much about Salon Training International, but about this, which is YBNYourBeautyNetwork.com. This is something Correct. you and Susie have been spending the last year or so developing. It's out. It's already successful. Tell me what it's about. Tell me how it works. It came out of really a necessity. Here we were off doing lots and lots of training seminars, going into markets and then not coming back for a year, and wanting to basically help our participants to help, help them run their business and get information that they need as a, as a, as a salon owner. Uh, as, you know, as we are owners ourselves, we know what it takes to be a salon owner and uh, the information is just not readily available and we wanted to right. provide them with the solution. It says here you can, on this postcard that you sent out, it says make more money, recruit your staff easily, attract mm -hmm. new clients, increase retail sales. What kind of information would I as a salon owner say 8 o'clock at night and I say, gee, I've got uh, three potential stylists coming in tomorrow. I have no idea how to interview them. Can I get right. help from your site? Definitely. There, there uh, is information like interview questions, um, a uh, application that the, that the uh, potential employee could fill out. Like that's the kind of information that we want to f that we want them to find there. An mm -hmm. online training uh, on how to interview and what to look for in a potential employee. That type of information that will really impact those salons. How does this help the distributor? Bert? What's in it for them? Um, ultimately, of course, it's going to if we can help to grow the customer, we can help to grow their sales. You know, so distributors getting behind providing more business information and education to salons is only going to benefit them. It benefits their sales consultants. It's a place for their sales consultants to go to get information that they can then distribute and walk into that salon and say, hey, you were telling me you were having a problem with you know, X, Y, Z. I've got an answer. And they look like the superstar, and they got it off of Your Beauty Network. You know, um, on YourBeautyNetwork.com, I want to take just a second here and show people what they're going to see when they click on to this because you've got a great presentation at the very beginning. Let's take just a minute and have a look at this. That lasts, what, really three or four minutes, right, in total? We didn't have time, of course, to show yeah, the whole three thing. three and a half here. minutes, yeah. Very professionally <clears throat> done. Mm -hmm. You put a lot of work into your beautynetwork.com. Well, it's, we're partnering with a, a great technology company that's helping to deliver this information in, in a way that really makes a difference. So it's not just flat articles, but mm -hmm. it's actually an interactive experience where you can get the kind of information, again, that truly will impact a salon's business long term. It seems to me, Bert, that a lot of the information that what I've seen, as you show me uh, yourbeautynetwork.com, is information that typically you have sold in your training programs. Mm -hmm. You're now giving away free. Are you aware of what you're doing here? We are aware of it, and that's really our commitment. Our commitment is to, because as you know in the Profile Spotlight, we're always developing new items. So it's, it's not like this is it. So we're willing to give away some information to attract people to the site, to make a difference in their business, for free um, because that's the kind of future and that's the kind of industry we want to see in five years mm -hmm. from now is an industry that has this type of business information. This of course from the uh, company that increased the bottom line sales for a distributor $476,978 with one three-day class. That's true. Exactly. It is true. Bert, it's always nice to have you on the show. Your lovely Thank wife, you. Susie, is on our other show. Are you aware of that? Did she tell you? Oh, I think she snuck out when I filmed Did that. she really? <coughs> uh, YourBeautyNetwork.com is uh, the latest from Salon Training International. If you would like to see Bert or Susie, you, they're walking around the convention floor here mm -hmm. at the BBSI. Mm -hmm. Their phone number, of course, is on the screen. You can call them at the office. Mm -hmm. And partners, you're interested in anybody that would like to participate in this, true? Definitely. Any distributor, manufacturer that has interest in what, we, what they've heard today, please get in touch with us and let's talk about how we can make a difference in the industry. So there you go. Anything you could possibly want from the people that pretty much know it all. Salon Training International and now also yourbeautynetwork.com. Bert, thank you. Thank you. Ray. We'll be back with more profiles right after this. Don't go away.
tomorrow. There's a lot more to come on Profiles from the beautiful Hilton Cancun Beach and Golf Resort. Right after this, BBSI Minute. Don't go away. Hi, I'm Bill Gray, your BBSI president, back with another BBSI Minute. At BBSI, we have been developing a concept known as One Roof, a community building an industry. We believe that the successful future of our industry will depend on all facets of working together toward that critical end. Currently, BBSI, TSA, ICE, AACS, NAHA, YEC, ACE Grants, Beauty Inc., and the Polk Professional Beauty Foundation are all participating in the One Roof concept. The roof community touches salon professionals, distributors, manufacturers, manufacturers representatives, salon owners, school owners, students, virtually every segment of the industry. We invite each and every one of you to visit the One Roof Community Center on the convention floor to learn more about the advantages that we truly believe can be achieved by working together as one unified force. I will be back later in the profile show with more about your BBSI. Well, it's been quite a while since I've been up here to Erlanger, Kentucky, actually Cincinnati to most of us, at the home of, uh, of Tressa. Connie Barrett, of course, one of my favorite people in the professional beauty industry, probably one of yours too. If there were a matriarch in our industry now, it would be Connie Barrett, because 31 years ago, she started this company, and of course, it has become a staple in so many salons across the country. Great hair care products, great perms, and one of the best hair color lines in the entire industry. But there's so much happening here. Uh, we thought it was time for you to kind of be re-exposed to Tressa. Uh, Bob Burns, a man who has a long, long history in the professional beauty industry, has joined Tressa. He's the executive vice president now. The company has recently acquired or adopted, as they like to say, the artisan product line. There is some exciting news about that. They have got unbelievably exciting plans and there are some big changes in uh, the Tressa product line as well which if you don't know about yet you're going to want to stick around and listen because after 31 years it's all brand new here at Tressa. One of the most important new things at Tressa is their new executive vice president Bob Burns. He was anxious to show me around and to talk about the excitement around the company. And of course, we'll talk to Connie Barrett in just a few minutes. But let's start with the man who's got big plans for this company, Executive Vice President Bob Burns. Bob, I want to talk to you about this because this is uh, very exciting, this artisan product line, certainly one of the best kept secrets in the beauty industry for quite a while now. Terrific products, great package. And we're going to talk about that in a second. But before we do, I want to talk about uh, what you've done with Tressa. Certainly at the top of the heap, chemically in this industry for many, many years? Oh, I believe so. I, I think we want to uh, we want to posi position ourselves certainly as more than a chemical company. We certainly want everybody to become uh, chemically dependent, mm -hmm. but uh, certainly in, in, a, good in a good way. In a good way. <laughs> in a good way. <laughs> um, and but now what, 10, 10 11 new 11 products? new products. Here at the BBSI? Yes. Um, I don't want to steal the thunder from, uh, from Mike, certainly in the laboratory, but we did put our heads together. And we've taken a concept of going back to basics. Um, as you know, your hair is never any better than when you're a child or an infant. And what we've done is um, we've put together um, complexes, Tressa complexes, and they're all based on building block scenario from proteins and amino acids. I think these products are uh, exactly what the consumer is looking for and by far um, superior styling products, especially for maintenance of uh, color treated and permed hair. Okay, let's talk about this, because this, um, this artisan line, this beautiful package, this has only been around what, two, three years in the beauty industry, something like that. What was it about this product that was impressive to you, and what is it you want to try to accomplish with this at Tressa? Well, we were looking for something um, different, something that would give us uh, um, an updated image and really go after clientele, which uh, we have really never uh, went after before. It gave us the opportunity f to go after a more, I think, sensitive consumer to natural products. 
Um, these are very eco-friendly products. Um, when Mike gets into the chemistry, certainly, certainly everyone will understand very quickly how they are different. Bob, how are you going to use this? I mean, how does the synergy work for you now with redesign, repackage of the Tressa line, 11 new products in the Tressa line, this beautiful Artisan line, which is a complete departure. How does all of this come together and, and work synergistically for this company? Well, I think we're going to use the best of both worlds. Um, I think one of the issues that Artisan had when they, they launched is that uh, there wasn't the focus. I think that we have the talent here and the resources to really bring this line and let it complete its destiny. Because um, it, it did not have the chance to get out to, the, to all the consumers. We're going to go ahead and add perms and color to this line so it'll be a full service line. I think that's another, um, another issue that it had, is it, that it couldn't, it couldn't fit into full service the clientele. From the Tressa standpoint, I think the Artisan uh, line has helped us be more creative from the standpoint of thinking of where Tressa can be and what it can do. Um, both of them are, are definitely uh, professional products. As you know, we make all of our products in-house in our own factory. It makes us, um, it makes us very strong on uh, service to sales. Our back orders are nil, um, and we're able, to, we're able to move very quickly to get products into the marketplace. So I think when you looked at both of them, they, there's a compensation on both ends. It has given us a really good balance. Tressa's new marketing programs, along with the new Tressa graphics and packaging, offer the distributors the creative edge they need in today's competitive marketplace. And at Tressa, there's still more to come. Page, of course, responsible for all the creative. And I got to ask you about this new. Oh, these are the pictures too, aren't they? Yes, they are. What, what, what was the concept here? If we look at this, and I don't know if you can see some of this, Rob, but you can see the new graphics are all beautiful, all new photography, and it has a real kind of, uh, as you call it, what, lifestyle? Lifestyle. What were you trying to create? I mean, was it a problem trying to work all of these into this same theme? What, what did you try to do? Um, it, it really wasn't a problem. We wanted to show that we have products to support everyday lifestyles, everyday hairstyles. Um, we have the technology and we want to bring all of that together in one image to show that we, we support salons and salons building their business. Mm, I want to ask you about something I'm not supposed to ask you about. Okay. We got these over here and I don't know Rob if you can see it. I'm going to grab one of these. This is beautiful. Did you just do this? Can we show this? Is this okay yes, to show? Yes. Is it alright? This is our launch. <laughs> this, is, um, this is the Artisan Perm Box? Perm Box, yes. So, and of course, there was no artisan perm a week ago, but right. there will be. There will be soon. And uh, these boxes are just beautiful, and I see a couple more over there. Mm -hmm. are, are you going to take this kind of theme now and expand it through the whole artisan line? Yes, we are. We're going to have a um, kind of a healthy look throughout the line. We're going to have perms, straighteners, color. We're going to expand the line a great deal. Tressa's education will, of course, add even more support to the Tressa and the new Artisan lines. And marketing director Nora O'Keefe believes the new Tressa products, 11 of them, will be a big hit where it really counts, with the consumer. You would be referring to the complexes. I would be. And they are a line that is each, each um, product in the wet line is comprised of a special complex, which each has a specific formula for each hair type in each product. And from a marketing standpoint, the way we've called that out is in each product name, the complex within that product will be capitalized on the bottle. So for example, Mender has um, complex R in it. So it really helps the consumer identify with what they're buying. So we're very excited about that line. How are you going to take the, um, the differences between the Artisan product line, obvious differences between that and the Tressa line from a marketing standpoint and deal with those to the industry and to your distributors and to salons. How do you separate the two? I think the main way to do that is to focus on their each individual properties. For instance, the Tressa base business, as I referred to it, is um, very reliable, is the integrity of Tressa, that the formulations are, the consumer trusts them, relies on them. They know that for their perm follows up with this shampoo, for their straightener follows up with this conditioner. And it's, I, I guess, more of a historical line. And then the artisan line is new for us. It's, um, 
we're really hoping to fill a, a gap that's been left in the marketplace for a natural line that is very free from harsh chemicals of kind of for people that live a life a certain lifestyle and they want to extend their health and beauty habits to that lifestyle. One thing that definitely sets Tressa apart from most other companies is the fact that they formulate and fill all their products in-house. Their filling lines now run almost constantly with the addition of the new Artisan line and the benefit to the distributor is notable. Quality control from start to finish and practically no back orders. I asked Operations Director Ron McLean about the benefits of manufacturing the Tressa and Artisan products in-house. It allows us to control everything from the ingredients that go into our products all the way to the processes that we use and ultimately the finished quality that we send out the door. You know, it's easy, I guess, or it certainly seems to be easy for a company to, to gear up and get a filling line going and fill a bottle of shampoo. But you do shampoos, you do conditioners, you do perms, you do color, everything here. Right, that's correct. We do the full gamut of products and uh, uh, it, it does provide us challenges and opportunities on how to best use our facility, our equipment to make these various products, but uh, we view those just as that, challenges to be met. The lab facilities here at Tressa, not only are they clean and neat, but they're headed up by a really, really, really smart guy. This is uh, Michael Thomas, who is director of R&D, right? Correct. I hear you're the smartest man this side of the, what is it, Missouri River? At is least, that what's out there, the Missouri, Missouri River, or is it the Mississippi? I, I it's think we one could of probably those. start with the Colorado. Yeah, and this I know way. you guys are all alike, but I got to <laughs> I, I got to talk to you about something that mm -hmm. uh, must be very exciting for someone like you because of the fact that your business is developing hair care products. Tell me about the new products, eleven new products from Tressa, all involve this relatively revolutionary concept of complex. Is that complexes it? exactly? Tell me in a, in a layman nutshell, mm -hmm. what's it all about? Why does it work, and why is it better and different? I think that's the most difficult thing for me is getting into layman terms. But working with the complexes, what we find here is we've got complexes regarding specifically the moisturizing abilities of hair. We have grid type of complexes that take polymeric films on the outside of the hair and we have amino acid complexes and proteins that are small enough to go inside the hair and actually repair hair and increase the uh, elasticity of hair, the actual strength of hair. There's a lot of things we can affect by mixing and matching the complexes, which we do in some of our products also. Yeah. So the complexes really are very complex by nature, but the results that they give you on your hair, as far as restoring your hair to a pristine or more virgin condition, mm -hmm. considering how much damaged hair there is out there. I think one of the things at Tressa that we've striven to do in all of our products is to create results without causing damage to hair. Research, people, products, packaging, and a whole new line in Artisan. There's a lot new at Tressa, and it's all under the watchful eye of the woman who started the company 31 years ago, CEO and founder, Connie Barrett. Connie, as you, as you look over 31 years of your company, uh, what stands out for you as the high points? Um, you know, was it the, the new product you introduced here? Was it the packaging? Was it, I mean, what do you remember as high points over this past Three decades. I think when um, when we opened our first manufacturing facility, that was pretty exciting. We were then in control of our destiny, no longer under somebody else's thumb, and um, that was very exciting and challenging for us. Probably the first symposium we had in New Orleans. This is some years ago now, in a huge ballroom with two thousand stylists and DSCs in the audience chanting Tressa. That was pretty exciting and somewhat emotional. I'd have to say becoming a leader in uh, what I'll call the chemical service area has been very exciting. We're a company that is focused in the success of salons in their backroom area in services. And consequently, I think it's given us a lot of credibility, integrity over the years because we developed educational programs with that same focus in mind. Mm -hmm. So we deliver to stylists, I think, the information and tools to help them do the best job possible. 
you have adopted, acquired, whatever the word would be, one of the most exciting new product lines in the industry, probably one of the best kept secrets, I think, in the beauty industry, the artisan product line. Connie, what does this mean to the Tressa distributor? It's going to mean a whole new market for them. I think it'll get them into salons and with customers that they have not dealt with before. Because it's very different, as I say, it's, it's a lifestyle line. It really has to, to do more with wellness and taking good care of yourself. Uh, it goes along with the spa approach, with the uh, vitamin mineral herbal approach. Mm -hmm. It appeals to a specific customer that's a growing base out there. What about you personally? I mean, what, what's your goal here? What are you trying to accomplish with, you've got your new products, you've got the new artists in line, you've, you've kind of almost reinvented Tressa. I mean, what are you trying to do? I think if you want to stay in any business, you have to constantly re-energize, rethink, look for new, look for better, to bring innovation to the table. I think it's something that uh, we have done consistently over the years, and I don't think you can stop doing that. And I'm looking clearly to have a more important position in the marketplace with the stylist, with the salon. I want to bring to them all the things they need to do a better job. So I think change is a part of any business, of any life. It's what you must do. So if you're not up for that, I guess you retire. It's time for another Spotlight here on Profiles, and with me is Ken Krebs, the president of Beneficial Capital Leasing, the company that knows more of what this industry needs than anybody, and that would be money. money. Financing, really, is what you're all about, true? True. The beauty industry typically is not something that the financial industry, specifically the financing industry, has looked at and said, wow, we got to get into that business, the beauty industry. And yet, this is what you specialize in. Yes, it is. No, you're right. Traditionally, it's, it's an industry that uh, many finance companies have stayed away from. But since 1992, we've been focusing on the industry. You know, our industry is full of entrepreneurs at all levels, and especially uh, a lot of salon owners started out as hairdressers, and they want to build a salon. Entrepreneurs are typically difficult to finance, no matter how secure they really are or how good their business is, and yet you seem to be able to really get in there and get people financed where a bank or maybe another uh, leasing company just wouldn't be able to do it. How do you manage to do that? Well, we've been doing it for eight, eight, nine years. The people that in our company have backgrounds in the financial industry. So we, we can look at a, when, when, an when a company comes to us for finance, we don't just look at that application and, and put it through a checklist and decide if it's good or not. We, will, we know the industry well, we know the financing industry. We get to know the applicants and we look at each one individually. And we, uh, we pride ourselves on finding the strengths that they have and, and making it a, a doable deal. You know, Ken, it would seem to me that when you help a distributor uh, by financing uh, their client, when they come to you and say, we've got this person with a salon, we need to finance new equipment, new inventory, whatever, when you take that client and you get them the financing they need, which you are so good at doing, you're really helping increase the distributor sales, true? We've always chosen to get our business from distributors. We've tried to develop partnerships with many of the, the leading distributors and manufacturers in the industry. And when they refer a transaction to us, we take that very seriously. We try to give something back, and that's by, we, how we do that is by going the extra mile and, ex and trying to approve more of their transactions than they're used to getting approved mm -hmm. and, and approving them for a larger amount. And, and to go a step further, what we've done is instead of just financing equipment and furniture and, and the things that are traditionally financed by companies like us, we'll do construction, uh, build out, uh, we'll, we'll finance inventory, for the retail sales, that type of thing. So we've tried to widen up what we can do for them. Ken, do you ever sit down with a distributor or a manufacturer and say, let's work out a program that you can take to the salons, to your customers, and offer them? So really, before it's even needed, you develop a program for them that would actually help them make the sale? Do you do that? That's a good question. That's exactly what we do. We try to sit down with 
uh, our manufacturer and distributor clients and to see what they need. We, we understand their clientele, we try to get to know their clientele very well and decide how we can build their business. I know that you've worked some special programs for a couple of uh, major clients of yours, Wella, I know, and Belvedere Company, where you've worked out some packages, programs for them that actually allows them to offer as little as, what, 1 or 2% financing, something uh, like that? Down to 1.9%. That's amazing. I, I, it's very difficult to match that. It is, truly. Mm -hmm. I would imagine if I were a distributor that part of the problem of being in business would be uh, getting these large larger purchases financed and getting my customers financing when they need it. Do you find that this is what distributors are asking for a lot? Yeah, we, we, we do get that a lot. And um, I don't want to give people the opinion that we just buy um, uncreditworthy type applications. But because we know the industry well, and again, because we go, we go beyond the surface, uh, we know the industry very well, we can approve more transactions than, typically, than typical leasing companies can mm -hmm. approve. What is a distributor typically, uh, what's the success rate typically for a distributor in trying to get people financed for their project? Now that's hard to say, but I'm going to guess probably, depending on the distributor, anywhere from 40 to 50 um, percent really? approval rate would be typical, I think. And we've been able to increase that 10, 20 percent, I believe. That increases sales for the distributor, doesn't it? Yes, it does. And because of our programs, we're able to not only increase the number of their sales, we can increase the size of their sales. Wow. Ken, what do you want the distributors and the manufacturers to know here? I mean, when they come down to your booth, what do you want them to be asking? What will you be offering them? Our objective is to help them build their sales. So the, the companies that have been working with, with us for the year, over the years, I think, understand that. We'd like them to come by and see us and see if there's anything else we can do for them. The people that don't know us, the companies haven't worked with us in the past, we'd ask them to come by, uh, visit with us, give us an idea of what they're doing now and that type of thing, see if we can and increase their sales. Ken Krebs, the president of Beneficial Capital Leasing, the man that knows more about money, more about financing for your business than anybody in the, in the industry. Your booth number is, you Th know it. 1345. Come down and see him. Uh, he'll be walking around the convention floor. He's a tall, good-looking guy. But uh, whatever you need to know about financing, about helping your business and helping your customers get financing, Beneficial Capital Leasing is the company. They know more about it, do more of, of it in the beauty industry than anybody. True? Absolutely. True. Nobody does it better. Nobody. 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 That's good. Thanks for being with us on the show. Thank you. We'll be back with more profiles right after this. Don't go away. Nobody does it better. Listen, don't go away because when we come back here on Profiles, uh, we will bring you here to Skaret. Skaret with uh, Marisol Peral from the Public Relations Department of this gorgeous, gorgeous reserve here. A, uh, an echo, archaeological friendly, echo friendly <laughs> park. <laughs> It's something like that. It's a jungle out here, folks. We'll be back. Don't go away. Creative Nail Design defines color with a new bottle, new colors, and sleek new display. The contoured bottle and ergonomically designed cap have been developed for ease of application, stability, and optimum comfort. The formula features improved coverage and better wearability. Creative Nail Design's all-new color initiative is a complete collection of 83 shades, 50 new colors and 33 returning favorites. These enamels are beautifully showcased in a contemporary display that says a lot without taking up a lot of space. Your color business is about to be reborn with Creative Nail Design, located in Meeting Room D. This is uh, really a beautiful place, this uh, correct here on the Yucatan. Um, kind of a cloudy day today, but uh, that's probably the way uh, that these people live most of the time because a lot of times it rained here. Of course, we're in the middle of pretty much of a jungle. Down below is um, the Mayan River in its natural state. What they have done here, though, in the park is they have built up some uh, kind of replica of what the Mayan village would have looked like 1,500 years ago when the Mayans lived in this part of the Yucatan. They were the, uh, the natives in this part of the country. And uh, they were kind of the merchants. They were the traders. They would go to Cozumel and they would trade uh, goods. You can see across the way, and Rob, I don't know if you can see it over there, there's caves that are dug into the walls here. And apparently they used these caves probably not only for shelter when they needed it. I would imagine that uh, when hurricanes came, it was pretty bad, but also 
they use them to mine and they would get this coral kind of material out of these mines and they would use it to build their houses and use it as cement. And of course they use a lot of wood and a lot of uh, thatch from the palm trees around here. But this is kind of an authentic look of what the Mayan village area would have looked like right in this river, which is in its natural state. Interesting, huh? Hey, listen, don't go away because when we come back here on Profiles, you'll meet Bill Gray. Well, they already know Bill Gray, but he's the new incoming president of the BBSI. Suave and dapper man that he is. He's brought us here to uh, Scottsdale, Arizona for a look at the LDC and the YEC at the BBSI. Yes, we have. Eloquent, too, isn't he? Don't go away. There's more to come on <laughs> Profiles right after this. That's good. It's time for another Spotlight here on Profiles, and this time we're on location in New York City with Repishage founder Lydia Sarfati. Repishage has their own spa in this beautiful Galleria in Manhattan. Having this spa means that Repishage can keep in touch with what estheticians need and what clients want. For Lydia, it's like a working laboratory. Lydia, I guess the most important part of this entire Spotlight segment is the fact that we're here in New York in the middle of Midtown Manhattan at your Repishage spa, and this is really what sets you apart from everybody, is it not? Yes, and I, I strongly believe that what we are able to deliver to our clients is very much the hands-on experience that we have had since 1977 here in New York. We are one of the first pioneers with developing spa and spa concept in United mm -hmm. States. I know that you, you know many skin care companies, um, hair care companies, they have a test salon, they'll have lab testing facilities, but this really kind of takes it all to the next level, doesn't it? Yes, the Repechage Spa in New York City has always been my clinic. This is where we see clients on a daily basis, and it's not you know, a laboratory per se when it's pseudo type of a salon. Mm -hmm. This is a real working place, and it has been almost 20 years. Lydia, for about the last four years, I guess, you have made the choice to sell your products through the professional distributor chain. And of course, you are at the top of the heap in this business. Why did you make that choice? Well, we've made this choice four years ago. And this choice was really based on the fact that uh, I understood how large United States truly is. And I wanted to partner with people that care about their clients, that they care about providing the best service, the best education. And we have partnered, I believe, with the best distributors in United States. I think it's a perfect marriage between us as the manufacturer, the true expert in spa and skin care, and that of a distributor that provides us this hands-on in, on location service and training that I feel was always so important. Lydia, what's the benefit to the distributor? I mean, the, the guy who may have carried skincare in the past or maybe uh, struggled with a skincare line in the past, what is the benefit to them to look at Repishage and say, this is a company that we should be dealing with? I think what's in it for them from the business point of view is that Repishage is a very unique company not only are we dedicated to the education, which I strongly believe it's a must, but we totally understand the business of skincare, the marketing, the promotion, the advertising, the packaging. Uh, we are truly a uh, offer our distributor almost a franchise opportunity without the franchise fees. And uh, this is what's wonderful because we give them 20 plus years of experience, proven, tried, with great desires, beautiful skin, and beautiful business. What's your message to your distributors here at the BBSI? What is it that you want them to know about your company in the coming years as we get into the new millennium? Um, the new millennium is offering great opportunities. I think as technology is uh, out there, uh, there is a great deal of fear that I have found with many of the salon owners. Where will be their business in 2003? I find that offering skincare and spa services will provide a great opportunity for that salon owner to retain that client and not losing that client to department stores on the internet because at the end of the day, what people will return for is great service and that human touch. Mm -hmm. And skincare and spa service offers that as no other service. 
Lydia, you've got a, a beautiful spa here in the middle of Manhattan in New York City, the best location in the world. You are the CEO founder of a very, very successful skincare company. You uh, produce your own videos. You are a teacher. You're an esthetician. What do you like best about all the things that you do? What's, what's your favorite? To tell you the truth, I like everything that I do. But what gives me the greatest pleasure and reward is the, uh, the satisfaction that I get from teaching and sharing my knowledge with other estheticians, spa owners, salon owners, and as well as sales consultants. If I can improve their skills in becoming a better business person with their salons, that gives me the greatest satisfaction. That's what I love to do the best. This resort has it all, including one of the most beautifully designed pool areas we've ever seen. Managing a resort this size is certainly no easy task. It takes years of experience, and we met the man who faces the challenges of this big job every day. He's the general manager of the Hilton Resort. I asked him why companies should consider coming to Hilton Cancun Beach and Golf Resort for their meetings and conventions. Well, first of all, Cancun is uh, a, the weather, the beach, the beautiful ocean with turquoise blue water. Uh, this is already the first attraction. Second is an accessibility by air. You can pretty much from all over the states and from all over the world, you can fly into Cancun. It's very easy accessible into the international airport of Cancun. Coming into the Hilton Cancun Beach and Golf Resort is uh, very important to say that our area is 250 acres. It's a mega resort, 250 acres. So it's not a crowded, a cramped place, it's huge. It's not huge in the sense that the hotel is so huge, but it's huge in the sense of the area. And that's our luxury, I would say. When you look at our swimming pool area, we have seven pools. We have 20,000 square foot of swimming pool area. So you can have any event, a dinner or a welcome cocktail or what have you, in the pool area. We have 30,000 square feet of meeting space, 16 banquet rooms. So you can have meetings from 10 people to 2,200 people. So we can accommodate a big event or a small event, whatever it needs to be done. Peter, give me a last thought about, uh, about this property. What is it that you think really makes this hotel special and why should people look at your property as a place to come? I think definitely it's the warmness and the friendliness of the Mexican people by far. I would say they're very accommodating, they're trying their best, they're trying very, very hard to exceed expectations of our guests. If you are sitting at your desk when you get back to the office, just type in www.hiltoncancun.com, hiltoncancun.com, and you will find over 100 pages of information about this property. You can uh, look at pictures, you can look at all the stuff that we have been telling you about, all the things Mr. Letter talked about, the uh, attractions that are nearby, because this hotel is situated in a location that is so close to everything. As he mentioned to me earlier, you can't pretty much do everything in one visit. So you could come back year after year, and there's so much to do in Cancun. Uh, all the beach activities, the golf activities, they have shopping that's unbelievable here. All the information you need, everything you need to know about this hotel, this resort, you can get at HiltonCancun.com. Try it. You'll like it. Download pictures. Take them home. Show them to your wife. We'll be back with more profiles right after this. You know, we've been having a great time here in Cancun. The hotel is beautiful. The weather, for the most part, has been great. One day of rain. And we've met some really wonderful people. Among them, I might say, is this lovely group of lovely young ladies from Quincy, Illinois. You thought there were no gorgeous women in Quincy, Illinois? Boy, were you wrong. I'm going to let them introduce themselves. You are? Jessica. Suzanne. Erica. Danielle. Lindsay. Meryl. Melissa. See that? They are down here for summer break, I guess. School is out. Yeah. School is out. Everybody comes to Cancun. This Hilton Resort is a gorgeous place and it attracts really beautiful people. Stick around because there's a whole lot more to come on Profiles from Cancun. Don't go away. <laughs> a little bit of yeah. We'll get back to our regular Profile show in just a minute, but I wanted to take a little bit of break and uh, bring you here to Scottsdale, Arizona, to uh, one of the major BBSI events every year, the YEC event, of course, and the Leadership Development Conference. It's going on here, 
at this beautiful resort outside of Scottsdale, and there's a lot of people here. Not enough people, actually, uh, from what everybody tells me. They wish everyone in the industry could come to these events and find out what they're all about. The people that are here are having a great time, and most important, they're learning a whole lot. Listen. It's an honor to be here, actually, and my company sponsored this in order to help me develop more people in my division to be stronger. Um, leadership and the future growth of e-commerce, we were just learning, blows your mind away. So there's so much responsibility as a leader to feed other people information and disseminate it down instead of just trying to do it yourself. So there's a lot happening here. My brain is like fried already. So it's very important to be exposed to these type of people. It's the top people in the industry saying things that maybe we're a few years behind, but to know that it's coming is important as a teacher and to be able to share that with people. I learn, I learn, I learn uh, from the speakers, from the colleagues. I just wish there would be more of us here because uh, all our industry could learn more and could be better, could be more whole, so to speak. And I really love that YEC and the leadership conference were put together to make this logistically easier for all of us. And again, more of us should really be here. Uh, that's my biggest gripe, to be quite frank. The quality of the speakers is superb. Well, I think it always keeps us on the leading edge of um, looking at information we probably wouldn't look at on a day-to-day -day basis. So it gets us out of the box, kind of refocus on things that uh, we can do better to refine our daily business activities. Plus, it also gives an opportunity to look down the road and see what other facets of the business we need to work on on a separate basis. So, it's uh, stuff that we do today and things we need to be doing down the road to stay in business. Every time we come, we learn something new. This morning already, I've learned different ways to check out our inventory. I now consider my warehouse a vault, so I want to go and look at new ways to address that. And I've also learned a lot about the e-commerce, and it's amazing the way things are changing. Never thought that it was going to be this huge, and we'd better really start acting much quicker than what we have in the past. So we're really looking to make some changes when we get back. What advice would you give to people who know that these conferences exist? Everybody knows that there's the YEC, that there's the mm -hmm. LDC, but a lot of people still don't come. Right. What would you tell them? If you could stand up in front of everybody in the BBSI organization and right. the beauty industry who doesn't come to these events as to why they should, what would you personally tell them? I would personally tell them that there is so much that they can possibly get out of this that they need to attend. Either if it's a very new manager that they're bringing in or if it's somebody that's been in the industry for 15 or 20 years, you can always walk away with something. And there's so much constant change. If they don't come, they're never going to keep up with what's going on. I just can't imagine not being here every year. The Leadership Development Conference is just one of the many important events hosted by the BBSI each year. This year, for the first time, it was combined with the Young Executive Council meeting, or YEC, for the mutual benefit of both groups of industry professionals. They always pick a beautiful location. And this year's event was held at the amazing Scottsdale Plaza Resort in Arizona. I caught up with the new president of the BBSI, Bill Gray, and asked him about these two very important BBSI events. Yes, they have been, and this is the first year that we've run them virtually back-to-back -back or con almost concurrently with a crossover because we felt this would be a way to blend the upcoming people in the industry with those who have been the builders of the industry for this last generation so that we could uh, create some synergies that would make it so that it's a more productive forum. From what I have been able to see and, and the reactions that I've had from the, the many people I've spoken to, uh, I think we've created a success. I think we've found speakers who are uh, working on cogent issues, issues that are going to be critical to us, not only today, but in the foreseeable future in the industry. And uh, I think we're getting the kind of response from all levels of the industry, the manufacturers, the distributors, the reps that are here, uh, are reacting very positively to what they're seeing. While we were in Scottsdale, we thought we'd take the opportunity to show you the brand new BBSI facility. This organization has really grown over the years. Well, you know, we've been doing Profile Show for a long, long time, and I remember, uh, gosh, it must be 12 or maybe 14 years ago, uh, we went to New Jersey, to Englewood Cliffs, or Englewood, New Jersey, somewhere in there, and uh, Frank Vela said, you gotta come film the uh, offices of the BBSI, and we went in, and we went up these stairs, and we walked in, and there were two desks in one office, and 
and uh, some woman in the back office, and that was the BBSI, and that was before your time, Michael Doss. Anyway, um, of course, it changed a tremendous amount since then. Fred Polk uh, took over the operation, and uh, things started to happen in a big way, not only for the BBSI as an organization, but also the facilities as well, and uh, the amount of employees and the things that were getting done. And as this uh, organization has grown, the need for space has grown as well. And of course, you know, they've moved a couple of times. Well, now they have really done it because we are here in Scottsdale, Arizona, in a beautiful location, in an, in an industrial park where the BBSI has purchased and built a 20,000 square foot building. Beautiful place, 10,000 square feet of it is actually housed uh, by the BBSI. The other 10,000 square feet is available for lease. Most of that is already leased, by the way. We'll talk about that later. But this organization now, of course, with this gigantic umbrella, as we talk about the, uh, the community, the community center aspect of the BBSI, we have the BBSI, we have Naha, we have the ACE Grant Program, uh, we have ACTS, the uh, school organization, we have Beauty Inc., the magazine, we have the Ice Show organization. There is so much going on now that they're all in this facility. And we thought we'd come here and take a few minutes in the middle of the show this year because this building just opened in December of 1999. They just had a party here, as a matter of fact, the other day. It is a beautiful facility. Everyone is crazy about it, including the brand new president of the BBSI, Bill Gray. So it's time we went inside and had a look at the new offices here at the BBSI. So I'm wandering around the second floor up here in the new BBSI facility, offices all over the place. This happens to be the office of Sherry Polk. Famous name in the industry, I might add. How are you? Good, how are you? Good. Like your new place, do you? Yes, it's great. <laughs> Let's talk about what um, is closest to your heart, which is the Ace Grant program, of yes. course, tied to the I'm a Hairstylist television commercial. You deal with students all day. You're the one that gets the calls. Tell me how it's working. It's great. You know, the responding, the commercial has hit number and numbers of, of households. I get thousands of phone calls. Probably in the past three months, that oh, could be a call. this could be one she call. She just called all day for you know people that see the let's 800 see. number and they call. Let's see if this is it. it could Good be morning, months. this is Sherry speaking. This could be Pizza Hut calling. Maybe it's somebody. You did. Oh, what network did you see it on? There you go. You see that? What network did and you your see name? it on? This uh, commercial, of course, has been running on MTV. Keith? It's running on E Entertainment. Keith, would you like me to mail you some information? It's running on the the, uh, the Comedy Channel. Okay. It's been running and all over the place. Last name? Um, sponsored by the Cosmetology Advancement okay. Foundation, of and course. Uh, the Which money from which came from last year's Beauty Ball, where Mike Renzulli okay, donated all his portion of the uh, proceeds for the ball to the same charity. It all went to the CAF, so they had a lot of money and to spend. Produced the, um, the I'm a Hairstylist commercial, which has been okay. broadcast uh, nationwide on all on these networks specifically related to young people for the most part. Oh, okay. And they call up this number and they take the information and send out information to them about how to become a hairdresser, schools to go to, and grants that is available, money that's available to them through the oh, BBSI. Okay. So that's what mm -hmm. she's doing now. I'm gonna see if we'll put this. Can you put this person on hold? Go ahead, they'll I wait. Sure can. They want money. Keith, can you please hold? Thank you. Thank you. You'll get back to him, for heaven's sake. I'll get back to him. These are the calls you get. These are the kind of calls. Yep. So exactly how it works. what do you want to happen from these calls? I mean, what's the goal? From these calls, what happens is I put them in the computer, I get them out some information in the mail regarding our participating schools through the American Association of Cosmetology Schools. We have now about 250 throughout the country, which is uh, you know a good number of their membership. And what happens is they get the information, hopefully they'll follow through with it and you know take our advice, go look at these schools, talk to the school director and enroll. That's our goal and hopefully these schools can help them out with some work on their tuition. And how much money have you spent so far? Have, have we yeah, given what is out, it like? we've given out over $700,000 in grants. Wow, that's a lot that's of money. That's recorded, so. Wow, a lot yeah. of money. Well, congratulations. Thank you, Rick. And I like your new office. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming and joining oh, us. Oh, listen, answer the phone, okay? I you will. One of the most impressive rooms in the new building is this spectacular conference room. Michael Toth gave me a tour and we talked about an event that the BBSI is investing a lot of time and effort in developing, the Naha Awards. Um, let's take a minute here, Michael, because what you obviously are most involved in and what people know you're very involved in is the Naha Awards, yes. a show that has really come into its own and seems to have found its home in L.A., yes? Yes, finally. Uh, it's truly a new era for Naha. We're connected with a stylist event. Um, we reach uh, the, at the last show there was 28,000 uh, beauty mm -hmm. professionals so we're hoping to tap into them 
to support Naha. Right. What are you going to do this year? What are we going to see this year that's that's different from what you've done in the past? Well, one of my goals is to kind of make some value for maybe even not a beauty professional, but a, just a consumer to mm -hmm. uh, get interested in the show and to go to the show. Uh, if it's through celebrities or uh, musical entertainment, uh, many things that we mm -hmm. can think of. So, What kind of support do you look for from manufacturers, from people in the industry? What can they do to help Naha? Manufacturers can always sign on as a sponsor. Uh, we are always accepting sponsors for Naha. Uh, Distributor-wise, uh, your customers need to know about Naha. Uh, call us. Uh, you know, we can send entry, uh, entry forms mm -hmm. to you for them. Uh, and just get out there and when you're in the salons, you know, talk about it. Robin Glassman is certainly one of the most recognizable faces here at the BBSI and she's seen a lot of growth and changes. Everyone here works hard to keep the convention fresh and exciting each year to keep attracting manufacturers and distributors from all over the world. What's different this year? What's new? I mean, obviously we're here at the show now, but, but for you, from your standpoint, what was different in getting this show together than previous shows? What's different? Um, it was a little different this year. We added a, a resource center with some new technology companies to show e-commerce and the whole internet world mm -hmm. to our manufacturers and distributors and to hopefully take the fear out of that aspect of what's inevitable mm -hmm. out of their business. I would think, Robin, that you, with this e-commerce, with what's happening with the internet, that you would actually have a lot of companies trying to get into this show that really have not a whole lot to do with the beauty industry. Are you seeing companies that want to come into the show that don't have anything to do yes, with Yes, we do have a few companies, e-commerce type companies, lending, loan, financing type companies, equipment, leasing mm -hmm. companies that have for the past few years, years been coming to the show. So that is happening more and more as they see this as a viable, profitable industry right. and other arm to reach out to. I have heard um, that you're working on some ways to try to keep more people on the floor more of the time. Correct. Is that true? That is true. This year, for the first time, all non-member distributors, which would be a large majority of the international distributors, on the show floor, they cannot go to the private off-floor meeting rooms. Only member distributors can go there, and that was based on the voice of the exhibitors mm -hmm. and as per our board of directors, they decided to keep the traffic on the show floor and get them visiting all 1,150 booths, 650 different companies. We decided to make that a new rule this year, right. and we'll, we'll see how that plays out and if that's worth it. You might have heard the rumor that the new BBSI facility has a, an exercise facility. That was it. It's this beautiful wooden staircase that goes between the uh, first floor and the second floor, and people are constantly going up and down. That would be the exercise facility. Also, you heard about the swimming pool, maybe. Well, that's a very lovely pond out in front of the building, part of the architectural design of the property. If you also heard that there was a golf course at the new BBSI facility, it's actually a country club a condo complex across the highway. So um, the pool, the exercise facility, and the golf course are here, sort of. But uh, be sure that the BBSI is spending every penny of your money wisely. This is a wonderful facility, and ultimately this is going to, of course, continue to uh, make money for the BBSI. Actually, it is a beautiful place, and it's a great investment. The Salon Association is just four years young and has quickly become a gigantic success. This organization was founded to support independent salon owners, and Jill Kohler has been involved from the very beginning. I asked Jill why she thinks TSA is so successful. A couple things. An exclusive organization just for them. Other groups, other seminars, programs have been for a sweeping group of the industry. We've said, look, it's just the independent salon owner. That's one thing. The second thing is, is there's, there's always been sort of a competitive nature. And we think there should be com competition between a salon owner and another. However, we think there's a lot of purpose in collaborating in building a bigger pie and expanding that networking so what we've brought to the table is the ability to bring salon owner ABC with salon owner XYZ they are, they're only five miles apart might be looking at the same type of clientele but they come to the table to find a better way to do business a better way to grow their profitability how is it that manufacturers or distributors but specifically manufacturers can get involved with TSA what do you want from them how can they help 
There's a myriad of ways they can get involved with us. After they've decided they need to reach the independent salon owner, that top 20%, we have the ability to customize different programs for them. Manufacturing has the best chance, the best shot at reaching our our member, their customer at Symposium. It's our annual business event. They can come in as a sponsor at $1,000 all the way up to $30,000 top sponsorships. And what it allows them to do is brand their company, become very apparent in the salon owner's eyes as a supporter of business education and business solutions. Really smart way to spend their, spend their sponsorship dollars. Jim Cox heads up the AACS and the CEA organizations that are now under the one roof concept at the BBSI. I asked him how this new synergy is benefiting his groups. I think the, the best part of it, Rick, is that we have an opportunity to interact with the people from the other organizations and know what's going on on their side of the industry and give them some input of what's going on with the schools. And we are able to do it in a, in a continuing basis, uh, as simple as sitting down and uh, having lunch in the, in the lunchroom here, as well as having formal meetings. But it gives us an opportunity to really plan and look to see what, uh, what we'll be able to do together in the future and, and learn from each other. It's worked out very well. Hey, listen, don't go away because when we come back here on Profiles, Mary Rector Gable, or Gable Rector, which is it? <laughs> it's Rector Gable. Is, it, is there a hyphen there? Yeah, there's a hyphen. Mary Rector, you know what we mean. The president, founder, CEO of BehindTheChair.com has brought us here to Chicago to the secret design firm that is feverishly working on updating the site on a daily basis. We tell you where we were, but we'd have to kill you. We'll be back with Mary <laughs> and BehindTheChair.com right after this. Don't go away. Is there a hyphen in Gable? Yeah. I, I, We're back with another Spotlight here on Profiles, and with us our good friend John Caspo, who is the president of the Assessment Specialists from Southern California. John, there are seven people watching right now who don't know <laughs> what you do and what the Assessment Specialist is all about, and yet it's one of the most important jobs any industry business has. Well, human capital, human resources is our, is our number one resource within our organization. What makes us different and lets our customers know that we appreciate their business is the people we have in the field. What we do at Assessment Specialists as a distributor for Profiles International is we help our clients cut their turnover in half. We also uh, have a system that allows us to put people in place and shorten the time that it takes from day to hire to when those people start paying us back. By hiring or helping these companies, your clients, helping them to hire the right people. Absolutely, and, and what we have found over the years is that if you match people and discover what the shared characteristics are of a company's top performers, be they sales managers, salespeople, store managers, educator, if you can discover how those top performers think, how they uh, are motivated, and what their personality makeup is, and match future candidates or future hiring decisions like that, you can significantly reduce your turnover. We've challenged the distributors that we've worked with to give us three people for us to test. And we make them salespeople. It could be anybody, though, within the company. We ask them to give us two people that are top producers, day in and day out, and ask them to give us one person that if they knew back then when they hired him what they know today, they might not put him in that position. Don't tell me who the underachiever is. We can tell you who the underachiever is at this point, why they're underachieving, how long it's going to take to fix it, and, and, and that's such an important thing to do because what we're able to do is identify for management how we can accelerate this person's development or maybe it's time to accelerate this person's exit mm -hmm. because the status quo isn't going to make it. You've had a lot of success just, uh, I know, in the past year since you were on uh, with us last year. It's been a good year. A lot of success in this industry. What kind of feedback are you getting from distributors and manufacturers that you've worked with? What do you hear? Well, there's no question that, that uh, we've been able to improve the relationship between manager and employee tremendously. We've been able to identify areas uh, such as maybe public speaking that a person might need or a little listening skills. And it really has fostered the relationship between manager and an employee. And a few people that are using it that, that wholeheartedly endorse our program would be Beauty Alliance Group, 
Columbia Beauty Supply, the Shakur Group up in New England has used our products for quite a, a period of time, and you can see that it's helping them manage their sales forces. Most companies have something new at the BBSI. Have you got new products as oh, well? Oh, absolutely. How could you come to BBSI without a I new guess product? Not. You know, there's two things that, that, that we discovered along the course of the year, um, and this is an interesting one. One, we introduced to many of the warehouse operations in the beauty industry an integrity test. A what? An integrity test, Rick. <laughs> yeah, they've been around for about 15 years, but the beauty industry doesn't seem to know them, and it's an instrument that for $18 or less will tell you whether an employee you're about to hire might steal from you, might abuse drugs, will they show up for work on time? Really? Will they work when they're there? Yes, sir. Give me a, a little bit of an explanation of this chart we see over your shoulder, this uh, graph, an important part of what you do? Well, it's a very important part of what, what our clients do. Um, one of the things that people shared with us is that the annual review process sometimes can be very painful. Uh, annual reviews are either something that, uh, you know, we increase performance on or maybe they're a task within, within the organization. And we've introduced to a number of people within the industry the concept of a 360 feedback system for performance reviews. And it's really simple. We asked employees, how much time do you spend with your boss? Most employees tell you, gee, I maybe get 5% of my boss time, boss's time, and most of that is his or her agenda, if you will. And what we did was we created a survey where we analyzed what the manager does, how the manager sees themselves, how the boss sees them, how five peers see the person, and how five direct reports see the person. That's why we call it a 360 system, because we are now giving people feedback. Again, part of assessment. Absolutely. Assessment specialist. That's right. Well, if you think about it, if you think about it and, and I'll leave you with this thought. When you buy an automobile today, you get a user's manual with it. When you buy a major appliance, you get a user's guide with it. When you buy a Casio watch for $12.95 at Kmart, you get a user's guide with it. Why would you hire an employee without some kind of user's manual? Mm -hmm. And you provide the manual. Absolutely. John Caspol, the man that does it all, the assessment specialist, part of Profiles International. He knows exactly what to do when it comes to hiring people. Interesting stuff. Come on by. We're, our booth is in the BBSI booth area. On We're a member sponsor to mm -hmm. BBSI. Stop it and see us. We have all these. In fact, we've even got our internet site up and running, and you can try a test on the net. Very, very interesting. Great. Come talk to John Caspol. We'll be back with more Profiles right after this. Really very good. You know, a lot of people come to Ishkaret to a swim because it's such a beautiful beach. There's a, a gorgeous beach here, a lagoon, uh, quite a bit of beautiful white sand beach. This is, this is called the inlet. And as you can see, um, people can swim here, they can snorkel, they can dive, whatever they'd like to do. It's very open, it's very unprotected from the standpoint of there's not a lot of policing as we would probably see if we had the same kind of park somewhere in, uh, in the States. There would be all kinds of rules and regulations. Here they watch out for the animal life, they watch out for the, um, the plant life, but if you want to go in the water and have a good time, you can do it. It's really great. Interestingly, and uh, Marisol is going to correct me if I'm wrong, the, uh, the Mayans would uh, purify themselves by swimming first in the cenotes. Cenotes, cenotes, which is the underground rivers. They felt that that purified them. So they would swim in the rivers, then they would come here to this inlet with their canoes that they would uh, dig out of uh, tree trunks, I guess is yeah. the way they made the canoes, mm -hmm. and they would go down to Cozumel. Mm -hmm. And Cozumel is where they would worship Ixchel, Ix Ix who was the goddess of fertility. Um, and that's pretty much the story. So this <laughs> would be the inlet that leads to the goddess of fertility. Mm -hmm. Do you, know, you realize that? Yeah. So all these people in the inlet right now are in big trouble. Oh, yeah. They are. <laughs> Great place here. We're going to look at the beach.